I'm here today to talk about hypoglycemia in patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. This is an enormous problem for our patients because it really limits how well they can control their blood sugars. I think every patient with diabetes knows that they need to keep their blood sugars in a near normal level to reduce their risk of microvascular complications, but this frequently comes as a cost, at a cost of hypoglycemia. And it's that hypoglycemia that is really the factor that limits how well they control their blood sugars. The consequences of hypoglycemia uh, vary, uh, some of them being inconvenient, uh, being uncomfortable, but we do know people lose consciousness with hypoglycemia, have seizures, people can die from hypoglycemia. And people with old, older people with type 2 diabetes who have an episode of a severe ep of hypoglycemia that requires the assistance of another have an increased risk of mortality in the subsequent year. So this is really something that every doctor taking care of patients with diabetes needs to think about. So when you see these patients, and, and you see every patient who has is on insulin or on a sulfonylurea, you need to wonder what their risk of hypoglycemia is. You need to ask them about their hypoglycemia, when it happens, if it is happening. Don't assume that those patients with a high A1C who you know have high sugars frequently are free of hypoglycemia. Current literature shows that really in, in the community is really not very high relationship between high A1C or low A1C and hypoglycemia risk. That is, people with very high A1Cs have the same risk of hypoglycemia as people with low A1Cs. So we need to be aware of it at all times. So what do we do when we talk with our patients about hypoglycemia? I usually first look at their glucose logs or in their meters or their CGM to see if they are having hypoglycemia. But I also ask them about undocumented episodes of hypoglycemia because they don't always check. I then ask them how low their blood sugar has to get before they have symptoms of hypoglycemia. And I think that's a very important question because if people have, have to get down to 50 and 40 to, before they have any symptoms of hypoglycemia, that tells me they experience frequent episodes of hypoglycemia which also tells me they frequently are having more insulin present uh, for their metabolic needs at the moment and we need to make a change. We need to help our patients understand how to pick a rational dose of insulin for every mealtime, every time they're eating, how to best adjust their insulin for exercise. If we can do that and use the tools that are available to us, we can help avoid hypoglycemia. Uh, in recent years, uh, the different techniques like continuous glucose monitors have come on the market, uh, low glucose suspend pumps, all of which have been helpful, but they're only helpful if your patient finds them helpful. So that's the other thing as doctors, we need to sit down and talk with our patients and think about what tools can we give them to help manage this problem of hypoglycemia. If we can avoid hypoglycemia, we can prevent patients from developing hypoglycemia unawareness which really puts them at risk for mortality and accidents uh, and disrupting their everyday life. If we can avoid hypoglycemia, we can help patients achieve better glucose control because they won't be so fearful and that will help them control their diabetes overall.